Now let's take a look at the bigger picture. Brian Glenn's with us, Chief Investment Officer, Premier Path Wealth Partners. Thanks for being here, Brian. Some of your thoughts on the market. I mean, first of all, we have a nice comeback this morning. A lot of worries, of course, about Russia, Ukraine, the tensions on the rise, even the talk of nuclear weapons. And that put, spooked the market this morning, but amazing to watch it come back. I mean, what do you make of some of the volatility? Thanks for having me, Nicole. And um, I'm down here at the Dynasty Conference down in Florida. And one of the things that uh, a lot of people are talking about is um, how the market has performed so well, despite uh, what's been higher than expected interest rates and lasting higher than we've anticipated. And one of the things that's been discussed frequently is the net stimulus that's going into the economy from the fiscal side. So despite restrictive monetary policy, it's been a net stimulus on the fiscal side. Will that continue? And then the other thing that's been discussed is uh, how strong the consumer is. This is a consumer-driven economy. And if you think about it, wages are growing north of 4%, which is almost twice the rate of inflation. And so if that continues, I think we have a strong backdrop for stocks and for the economy as a whole. So, I mean, we do have this higher for a longer rate environment. I think a lot of folks were hoping uh, rates would come down. You were talking about how we've been higher. Mortgage rates are higher. Uh, long end of the bond, you know, the long end of the curve has been higher. But we do have the Fed coming in to cut rates at least once, right? Um, what do you think happens there? If you look at historical rate cut cycles, typically when there's a recession, you get a deeper series of cuts. And we don't know the future, but... Um, I think what investors should start to expect is, sure, maybe there is a rate cut or two on the horizon. We know that um, the Fed funds rate is much higher than the real rate and, um, and, fast and higher than the economy is growing. But if we should expect um, possibly a scenario where rates don't, they aren't cut as sharply as we've seen in recessions, especially if we have yeah. an economy that continues to grow. Yeah. And in this rate environment, um, does it matter for a name like Meta that you do like, right? You like Meta. Uh, where rates are exactly? Yeah. So um, at Premier Path Wealth Partners, one of the things we say inside our office is um, that Meta is really uh, our kids' generation's cigarettes. And it sounds like a pejorative term, but for people who have invested in Philip Morris over the last 40 years, they know it's one of the best produ uh, performing stocks. And if that trend continues... Um, our job is to deliver returns to our investors. This is a company that cut uh, headcount by 15%. And then what happened? Revenues went up by 30%. Um, they're the largest buyer of NVIDIA chips, the H100 chip. And so there's an optionality play on artificial intelligence. Oh, and by the way, they pay a dividend now that they started in the beginning of 2024. So it's going to start showing up in um, some of the factor ETFs that buy into dividend stocks as well as buybacks. Um, and they have a return on equity of north of 30%. So it falls into a quality bucket for ETFs that buy stocks that in that method. Yeah, understood. And then you also have TransTime too, TDG folks, if you want to take a look at that one. Um, why is this a name you've followed for a long time? I've followed TransTime for quite a while. Uh, it's an interesting business. Um, it has margins. Most people wouldn't realize this. It's a manufacturing business. They make aftermarket aerospace parts. We have a situation uh, globally where our two largest producers of single aisle aircraft, Boeing and Airbus, have backlogs north of 10 years. So if you look at Airbus, it's 9,000 jets. If you look at Boeing, it's 6,000. If you look at what these guys are delivering each month, it's fewer than 50 jets. So they're barely chewing into that. And so what do we have to do? We have to maintain the aircraft fleet that we have now. And one of the big beneficiaries is going to be a company that sells into the aftermarket space. Um, and most people I don't think realize, but Transdam has higher margins than Apple and higher margins than Google. That's pretty amazing, especially for uh, the world of aerospace parts that you said in the aftermarket. I mean, do you like aerospace and defense stocks generally? Do you think that the Trump administration, I mean, he did say something in his speech talking about building up the military so that we don't have to use it. Um, did that bring some optimism for a name like, I mean, TransDime and, and aerospace and defense overall or not necessarily? There's a longer term trend that we've depleted our stockpiles, and this is actually before uh, Ukraine-Russia conflict. Um, I think there's a lot of change going on in aerospace and defense. Um, I think last time I was on this segment, we talked about uh, lower cost 
ways of munitions of aircrafts, and there's a ton of innovation in that space. If you look into the venture cap side of things, which I know we're not talking about now, there's a tremendous amount of innovation. And uh, I think it's an exciting space. I think some of the public companies, large and small, will benefit from that. And we'll see how the administration responds. Yeah, understood. Um, you know, also just um, when we look at the the new administration and how they're putting it together and, and they're looking at government efficiency, the Department of Government Efficiency, your thoughts on that group? Do you think that will um, serve a great purpose or not necessarily? I think it remains to be seen. We had someone earlier today speak at this conference. The number they put on it was 100 billion to 200 billion. It was actually one of the smaller line items of uh, of costs that would be ripped out of ripped out of the government in terms of the fiscal spending. And um, we'll see. It's, it's Elon running it. It's Vivek running it. Um, I think it's a clever play on words. We know this goes back to a tweet sometime in August where someone said, hey, we should do a Department of Government Efficiency, a.k.a. Doge, which is a play on that crypto coin. And so we'll see what happens. Um, I think anyone that sells into the DOD uh, you know, they might have crosshairs on them and, and trans dimes no different. Yeah. Um, that's part of their business. The other part is commercial. It's more than half commercial. Right. So overall, Brian, if you were to describe your mood and, and your attitude towards the market between now and the end of the year and then for 2025, um, what do you tell investors? The big picture takeaway, go for it, hold off. I mean, what would you say? I think you have to be somewhat selective. Everyone points to a higher market multiple. Everyone knows now, this is no secret, that's heavily weighted towards the NVIDIAs, the Microsofts, all of the large tech companies. And, um, and on the smaller cap side, we know those companies suffer from higher interest rates. They have weaker balance sheets. They have single lines of business. They're highly domestic, which by the way, that would actually be a positive if we put up tariffs and trade walls and bring back uh, production domestically. So there is an offset there. Uh, I think uh, allocators and investors have to be very specific about how they're allocating both across the economy and within which sectors. Um, you asked me how I felt. I think I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty bullish and, and I feel pretty strongly that the consumer is going to continue and that we have a strong backbone and we have uh, a number of good years ahead of us. Oh, I like the good years ahead of us, a number of good years ahead of I like that last ending there. Makes you feel a little better, right? Um, Brian Glenn, great to see you. Thank you, Premier Pat yeah, Wealth you, Partners. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.